Hey friends, what's up? Emily here, this is No Expert, and today we're talking kitchen scales. You know what that means, it's time for another leveling up. So for those of you who don't know, leveling up is when we take a deeper dive into some things we should probably know around the kitchen. Um, today we're gonna be talking, like I said, about kitchen scales. And to do that, we're gonna make a loaf of bread. So when we talk about using a kitchen scale, really what we're talking about is weighing our ingredients versus using these kind of uh, cup measures. And we do that because these things that we love and use all the time um, just aren't really consistent and accurate down to the minutia. And that kind of really matters with baking. And to demonstrate this, I thought it would be fun to try to get the right amount using our cups and teaspoons and a recipe that uses those, and then switching it over to the Graham's version to see how close we got and then adjust accordingly. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna do a little loaf of bread, sort of like a baguette style loaf of bread. So all this calls for is flour, salt, yeast, and water. So it kind of really matters how much of each you put in. Um, so I thought this would be a fun way to demonstrate. Let's get started. All right, so for this recipe, I'm going to be using 500 grams of flour, 350 grams of water, 11 grams of salt, and eight grams of active dry yeast. Or three cups and two tablespoons of flour, one and a quarter cups plus three tablespoons of water, two packets of yeast, and two teaspoons of salt. So let's see how those measure up. One, this is a half teaspoon, so two. And so that only got me to nine grams of salt, so I'm gonna add two more. Ten, nope, nope, that was 11. All right, great, 11 grams of salt. Next, let's try our yeast. So put this on here. Zero that out. Yes, there we go. And then I'm going to get my yeast open. So two packets or eight grams of yeast. Let's see how close we are. And with one packet, I get seven grams. Eight grams. One packet is eight grams. Oh, interesting. Eight grams of yeast. And to be as accurate as I can, I'm going to fill this guy up with um, one cup from here and a quarter cup, um, rather than trying to do it just by eyeballing because this doesn't have quarter cups on it. We need one and a quarter cup plus three tablespoons. Quarter cup. Also, if you've ever wondered what the difference is between this kind of cup and this kind of cup, it's only that this is easier to pour. Um, they are the same in terms of a cup is a cup is a cup. Um, this one's just for liquid because you can pour, you know, it's easier to, if you have a full cup like this, it's like, ugh, ugh. but this, ooh, yeah. You get the idea. All right, three tablespoons. Two and Three. All right, and then I'm going to turn this on. Put my bowl on here. Zero it out. And then see how many grams of water that is. <laughs> it is 309. We need 350, so we're off by 41 grams, not great. Good news is I actually need to break 50 grams out for my yeast. So I'm gonna just take that out. <laughs> and now that's 300. So that's done. Um, and then what I'll do is I will just add 50 grams this way. And with yeast, you want nice warm water wherever possible, like run in a bath. Right, that's 38, 42, 49, 50. I'm gonna move everything out. 
except the things that I need to create less chaos. <laughs> Missed. <laughs> All right, last but not yeast, our flour. <laughs> so I need three cups and two tablespoons of flour. I'm going to put, no, I'll just do it directly into here. Who am I kidding? And then we're adding two tablespoons. So far we are at 454 grams. We need 500. Might not be that far off. One level tablespoon and two level tablespoons. Okay, and that gets me to 475. So I'm gonna put actually another couple tablespoons in probably. That's 47. 496. Five hundred. Beauteous. Now we have all of our ingredients correctly measured. And as you can see, if I had done it the other way. <laughs> Why won't you turn off? Ah! All right, now everything is actually correctly measured. So let's get this bread. As you can see, if I had done it the other way, it would be not exactly what it was supposed to be. So let's find out what it is supposed to be. <laughs> All right, educational portion of the video over. I'll show you how I make the baguette, but we'll just do it Babish style because I feel like it. All right, so we have our flour, our yeast, our salt, and our water all ready to go. The first thing we're going to do is mix our salt into our flour and make sure it's well distributed because again, if the yeast hits the salt directly and there's a whole bunch of salt, the yeast will die. So salt mixed in, we're going to make a little well inside of the flour, and then we're going to mix our yeast and water mixture into there. Give that a little stir. Just kind of mix, mix the flour from the well you get the idea. All right, and then now we're going to just add our water. Yeah, and then we're gonna give that a stir. We want we want to really incorporate it. We're going for sort of a shaggy dough to even like kind of a wet dough at this point. And now that done, all we have to do is cover it with a damp towel and give it 20 minutes to rise. All right, we are back after rising. As you can see, it has gotten a little extra volume there. Um, now what we're gonna do is the classic baguette fold. Um, that's, we're going to sort of try not to degasify it too much and take these corners and just fold them in and fold that one in, fold that one in, fold that one in. And now we put it back in the bowl and let it rise again. And then we do that again. And then we do that again. And then we give this thing two more hours to rise. And then bam. We're on our way to Baguette Town. All right, that thing has definitely risen. Let's shape it. So in order to shape it, sometimes I just sort of stretch it out and don't worry about this whole portion of the thing, but, but we're gonna try it. All right, so you're going to like pull it out into sort of a rectangle and then fold one side and kind of use your heel of your hand to seal it and then turn it around, fold the other side, use the heel of your hand to seal that uh, and then Go again, flip it over and you've got kind of a baguette going. Um, should look something like a baguette and then we'll just do that for the rest of this dough. Give it another little rise and bring our oven up to 450. And while I do that, I'm actually going to put a tray of water in there because we want our oven to get nice and steamy. That's what gives a baguette its crispy, crunchy exterior. Um, one thing worth noting if you get any of the water onto a glass oven door, that can shatter that glass oven door. So maybe don't do that. Um, just be super careful with the water, you know? All right, uh, oven is up to temperature. Our baguettes are shaped and have risen again just a little bit. And we're gonna pop them right in there. Bake for 25 minutes, roughly speaking, 20 to 30. And wow, there you have it. That is definitely a loaf of bread. Did it make a difference to measure it? I don't know. I guess if I were going to do this every day for the rest of time, I would want to make sure that it was going to be consistent. And uh, so I'd probably do that again. But if I were just going to make uh, baguettes at home, 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, I would say that was overall a success. Thanks so much for being here. Don't forget to give this video a like. If you like it, smash that subscribe button if you want to see more like this. And I'll catch up with you next time. Bop 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 b